Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Apple today updated everything, and with this we got, I believe it was 71 vulnerabilities fixed across all Apple's of Apple's operating systems. I put together a table again uh, with a list of the vulnerabilities and which operating systems are affected. But on the Mac OS side, we got patches for Catalina, Big Sur, and of course, the latest, greatest Monterey. And then we have tvOS, iOS, iPadOS, and watchOS updates. iOS, iPadOS are similar enough where they only got one bulletin together from Apple. One vulnerability that I think was already made public affects uh, zip archives and how they can be used to bypass gatekeeper checks or maybe it's just a new vulnerability that is similar to some of the older ones. There are also some uh, lock of screen bypass vulnerabilities that are being addressed that uh, tend to be more interesting and uh, sometimes more easy to exploit. Also typical for Apple, we got patches for a couple of open source products that are included in macOS, for example, curl and uh, vim. If you're running macOS Monterey, you have to be a little bit careful updating to 12.3, which is now the latest version. The reason being that this version of macOS Monterey will remove Python 2. And while Python 2 is no longer supported for about two years, it's still used in some products and uh, just sort of blindly updating may get you into trouble here. So uh, double check that uh, none of the third party products that uh, you added or maybe your own scripts are still relying on Python 2. For a small script, uh, the transition from Python 2 to 3 is relatively straightforward. Uh, but of course, if you have a complex set of uh, libraries and such, uh, this may not be quite as easy. And we got yet another scam trying to solicit donations via CryptoCoin for Ukraine, uh, this time via Twitter by impersonating the account of Ukrainian First Lady Olena Selinska. Now, Ms. Selinska has a Twitter account that's not used publicly. It's set to a private. This fake account is public and posting calls for donation for charities via various cryptocurrencies. The only difference here is that the L in Selenska is replaced with an uppercase I and pretty much indistinguishable. The fake account shows up as number four if you're searching Twitter for Olena Selenska and the other three accounts are first of all the private account and then two completely unrelated accounts. So far, luckily, no donations to at least the Bitcoin address. And Didi wrote up a quick piece on curl on Windows uh, because, well, we had a recent diary that took advantage of curl. Some of the limitations and uh, also some ways how to detect and uh, how to use a curl on a Windows. Of course, uh, curl tends to be more popular on uh, Linux, but since Windows 10, it can also be found on Windows. It looks like malware authors are trying to take advantage of it. Well, uh, then it's time for updates to backup solutions again. And this time it's Veeam's turn. Veeam in particular popular to backing up virtual machines and such. Fixed two vulnerabilities. The vulnerability actually looks pretty straightforward here. It does allow unauthenticated users to access internal API functions. And with that, NetHacker would be able to upload and execute malicious code. Don't expose those APIs and 
And we have yet another approach escalation vulnerability in Linux. This time it's affecting the NetFilter code. So ironically, again, sort of a security component. The bug was originally found and reported by Nick Gregory and patches should become available now, but there is also a blog post by Nick with lots of details and essentially a proof of concept exploit. Apparently someone else already also published a similar proof of concept exploit. As far as patches go, I could only see the Debian patch. Uh, haven't seen anything yet from other distributions. So watch out for it and apply the patch as soon as possible. Well, and that's it for today. The five minutes are up and thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.